Hello, audience. Hello, family. Hello, colleagues. Today, I'm bringing us uh, environmental and social assessments uh, and management system uh, webinar. I hope you do enjoy it. So, uh, the module, uh, module nine, is a continuation of series of modules covering the IFC performance standards uh, one. You know, the clients or the proponent or the let me just say the clients throughout this webinar, the client is the proponent or the organization looking to, to start an investment project. Okay, so the client in coordination with other responsible government agencies and third parties as appropriate, uh, uh, that is those parties really obligated and responsible for assessing and managing specific risks and impacts like government, you know, will conduct a process of environmental and social assessments and establish and also uh, maintain an ESMS. That's why we are taking this uh, module today. And the ESMS appropriate to the nature and scale of the project and commensurate with the level of its environmental and social risk and impact. So this uh, webinar is uh, uh, taken as an extract from the IFC performance and that's on environmental and social sustainability. Uh, the copy effective January 1, 2012 is the document we are using for this webinar. Okay, so moving forward, I have a few, few slides to share, and these slides are going to center on the policy and the identification of risks and how to go about it uh, for this model. The management programs will take another time, and all of these other ones will be taking another time. So, okay, so the policy, let's talk about the policy. The, uh, the clients uh, will establish an uh, overarching policy defining the environmental and social objectives of uh, environmental and social objectives. Uh, sorry, I got to start the recording. Okay. So objectives and principles. Actually, talking basically principles that guide the project to achieve sound environmental and social performance. Okay, so. And the ESMS uh, policy has to be consistent with the principles of the performance standards and has to ensure conformance and be responsible for policy uh, execution, for the execution and also an excellent communication. The, pol the policy should be consistent with the principles. Uh, under some circumstance circumstances, clients may also subscribe to other internationally recognized standards, certification schemes or codes of practice, and these two should be included in the policy. So the policy should actually have to indicate who within the organization uh, or the client's organization, since we agree to use the word clients, will ensure conformance, who will ensure conformance with the policy and be responsible for its execution has to be indicated in the policy. So the client will have to communicate the policy to all levels of its organization, okay? so. Uh, Going further on it, the identification of risk and uh, uh, identification of risks and impacts, just like I, I stated in the initial um, overview that we are going to be taking item one and two. Okay, so the type, scale, and location of the project uh, will actually guide the scope and level of effort defo devoted to the risks and impacts identification process. So the scope of the risks and impact identification process will be consistent with good international industry practice. And uh, it should also determine the appropriate and relevant methods and assessment tools that should be used. Okay, So the process uh, may comprise a full-scale environmental and social impact assessment or a limited or focused environmental and social assessment or just a straightforward application of environmental siting or pollution design criteria or construction standards. So uh, is either we are having a greenfield development or an existing development, which in most cases will require an audit for an existing development. But for a greenfield development or a large expansion uh, with specifically identified uh, fiscal elements, aspects and facilities that are likely to be generated, I mean to generate potential significance and environmental social impact, the client will conduct a comprehensive Asia for the greenfield development, including an examination of alternatives where appropriate. Okay, but when the project involves existing assets, an environmental audit or a social audit 
it may just be uh, may just be uh, uh, sufficient. Okay, so they will also consider all relevant environmental and social risks, including the issues identified in performance standards two, three, four, five, six, and you know, all to eight. All of this has to be considered in the process. And those who are likely to be affected by such risks and impacts have to be considered as well. You know, in limited high risk circumstances, it may be appropriate for the client to complement its uh, environmental and social risks and impact identification process with specific human right due diligence as relevant to the particular business. Okay, so uh, looking at also the um, considering uh, GHG, I mean the greenhouse gases, the risks and impact identification process will consider emissions of GHGs. The relevant risks associated with a changing climate and the adaptation opportunities and potential transboundary effects, all of this has to be considered in the process, you know, such as pollution of air or use of pollution of international uh, uh, pollution of international waterways has to also be considered in the process. So, but where the project involves specifically identified fiscal elements or aspects and facilities that are likely to generate impact, environmental and social risks and impacts will be uh, identified in the context of the project influenced area. Yeah, that's why I add that to the base here. So uh, talking about the project influenced area, going further on that, you may want to ask what's, what area can you say is uh, the project influenced area. The area likely to be affected, that's the first point I put here, and the associated facilities, you know, are also project influence area. For instance, a transmission uh, line, federal transmission line for a power, power plant project uh, implementation or investment project. The, the transmission line will now be the associated facility to the project, okay? So the cumulative impact also, it's been considered the third parties action, the primary supply chains, the fiscal elements affected, uh, people affected due to their vulnerability. All of these have to be identified as uh, influence, projects area of influence. Okay, so for now, this is what I'm bringing to us. I will do this, uh, the identification of risks and impacts in details in our next webinar. I hope you enjoyed this webinar and uh, please get in touch with me comfort at richflow.com just in case you have any questions or any comments that you may want me to look at in the course of your studies or in the course of your project execution if you have any questions i'll be very willing to help thank you <laughs>